Hi there and welcome back to Understanding Medications. In this lesson we'll be aiming to get a general understanding of the first process of pharmacokinetics, specifically the absorption of drugs. There's many ways in which we can administer medications. For instance, if we took an oral tablet, that tablet's going to go down into the stomach, break up into millions of little pieces. It's going to wind up going into the uh, liver, it's going to go into the venous system, into the right side of the heart, into the lungs, into the left side of the heart, and then finally onto systemic arterial circulation where it's going to be able to do its actions. Now that's a long way. But if you administered glycerol trinitrate, or sometimes called nitroglycerin for angina, sublingually or under the tongue, or if you administered it by transdermal patch, or if you administered another medication by suppository into the lower portion of the rectum, all of those modes of administration will go directly into the venous system circulation then it would only have to go to the right side of the heart into the lungs into the left side of the heart and onto systemic arterial circulation and if you injected a medication into the subcutaneous fat that's going to go into the interstitial spaces around the adipose or fat tissue and then it's going to go into the venous circulation once again. But think about what happens when you administer an anesthetic into the lungs. The anesthetic would go directly down to the alveoli where it would enter into the capillaries of the lungs. The anesthetic would then just need to go to the left side of the heart and onto systemic arterial circulation. So that is one of the fastest routes of administration. Each of those modes of administration is going to need to be absorbed into the blood system. In fact, the only modes of administration that don't need to be absorbed are the intravenous administration or the intra-arterial administration because those types of administration place the medication directly into the blood. One thing to note about those different methods of administration is that they will vary with respect to the amount of time that they take to fully get into systemic circulation and therefore their peak concentration in the blood or their concentration max or C max is going to vary as well. For instance, the absorption of orally administered medication is spread over time and has quite a low C-max. Conversely, the same dose of an intravenously administered medication or a medication that is administered by inhalation into the lungs is going to have a fairly rapid spike in the C-max. And this is quite important, so I'm going to stop right now so that we can apply our knowledge of these different points about absorption with a quick quiz, and then we'll finish up with part B of the absorption lesson just after that quick quiz. We've just explained that there's a big difference between the concentration max, or what we call C-max, between a medication that is orally administered versus a medication that is intravenously injected or administered by inhalation. The absorption of oral medications will be spread over time much more. So let's think about what that would mean, for instance, with side effects and potential overdose. Looking at the graph of the concentration max between the different modes of administration, which of these do you think would have a greater potential for side effects? And you were correct if you had said that there was a greater risk of overdose and side effects with the types of administration that allow the medication to enter the systemic circulation the fastest. So there's a greater potential for overdose with the medications that are intravenously injected or administered by inhalation. Most medications bind to the receptor or enzyme that they're supposed to bind to, but they also have some effect on other receptors or enzymes. 
And that's the reason for many of the side effects of the medication. When the medication is in high concentration, it's much more likely that the drug is going to bind to and affect the receptors or enzymes that it's not supposed to bind to. Another thing I want you to note with these graphs is the speed at which the drug is metabolized and eliminated from the system, especially in the first instance when that concentration is the highest. Take a look at these graphs and explain which one you think has the steepest fall in the drug concentrations and what you think that means about the metabolism of drugs. And you were correct if you had said that the drug that has the greatest Cmax or concentration max initially has the steepest fall in drug concentrations meaning that they are the ones that are normally metabolized the fastest in that first instance, in what we will later know of as the first half-life in this time right here. And right now, let's jump back into picturing the important aspects of absorption.